everybody. Welcome back to Real Real Reviews. This is Cody Williams, and we're here to talk about the movie F9, The Fast Saga. As a new sequel, it is the ninth entry in the Fast and the Furious film series, if you're not counting the Hobbs and Shaw spinoff. Out of all the ways they could have creatively named this movie, they made it seem like as if you're playing a game of Battleship. Not gonna lie, I felt like this movie sunk my battleship of a brain after watching just how crazy and absurd they can get. We're no strangers to the ridiculousness of these movies, but this film just takes the cake. The movie's story follows Dominic Toretto, who is living the quiet life off the grid with Letty and his son, but they know that danger always lurks just over the peaceful horizon. This time, that threat forces Dom to confront the sins of his past to save those he loves most. His crew soon comes together to stop a world-shattering plot by the most skilled assassin and high-performance driver they've ever encountered, Dom's forsaken brother, Jacob. Looking back in retrospect, we have come a long way from when we got the first film 20 years ago. Picture it, 2001. It all started with car racing for the first three movies. Then after that, we've been getting espionage heist flicks. Not sure what egged them on to switch to the genre, but I really enjoyed the aspect when it was just all about car racing. Little by little as we got more sequels, the action sequences got really heavy-handed with the over-the-top unrealism and has completely lost me. Are these movies fun? Definitely. However, it doesn't stop the fact that these movies are one big giant punchline of a joke, as much as I hate to say. Some of these films are more enjoyable than others. But, for the love of God, can we just please end the series already? If this series of films isn't the definition of beating a dead horse, I don't know what is. I watch these movies regardless, but I'm going to complain the whole time. I just find it hard to believe that we have two more films to look forward to by the time it's all said and done. This movie, however, isn't the worst of the series or the best. You can definitely tell that it doesn't stray away from the formula built upon from the prior movies. Surprisingly enough, at least this series has a well thought out plan when comparing to the sequel series for Star Wars, and that's just unfortunately sad to say. I do love those Star Wars movies for what they are, but they did not establish a plan with their execution because you can tell they went all willy-nilly with them. Sorry for sidetracking there. As long as you don't take this movie seriously, you can still have a fun time with it. If you want crazy and ridiculous over-the-top attention-grabbing action scenes, then this movie will be right up your alley. Like your other films in this series, I know this movie isn't known for a top-tier script. But I kid you not that the story arcs for Dom and Jacob are pretty good storytelling in that aspect. Ever since the first movie, Vin Diesel has always been great when it comes to portraying the role of Dom. Surprisingly enough, John Cena is rather enjoyable for the character of Dom's brother, Jacob. As far as the other characters go, pretty much everyone from the past few films returned for another adventure this time around. It's no spoiler, because it was revealed in the trailer, but as crazy as it sounds, Han returns after his supposed death in Tokyo Drift. Won't say how, regardless, he's back. Easily enough, I really enjoyed everyone's performance. Don't get me wrong, I don't mean to sound shallow by any means, but just look at the hair of Charlize Theron's character of Cypher. She looks like coconut hair from Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I cannot take her seriously as a formidable foe with that hairstyle. Aside from that, Charlize Theron was great. As if I already hadn't egged on the crazy action scenes enough already, you really have no clue just how crazy it can get. We've come to the point in time where they actually go to space. Yes, you heard that correctly. Space. It's like they're trying to intentionally outdo themselves when it comes to the most outlandish stuff you'll ever see in a movie. Truth be told, it's laughingly enjoyable to watch, but at what cost? To really enjoy this movie to the fullest degree, you have to have some suspension of disbelief, as this movie is completely void of any realism. Funny enough, the movie itself breaks the fourth wall. 
especially when the characters realize that they never get a single scratch after everything they go through. It's like the movie's becoming self-aware of its own ridiculousness. To be honest, I really don't know what else to say about this movie. It's dumb, unbridled fun to watch, but it's just mind-numbingly dull to say the least. On top of that, this movie's way longer than necessary. With the credits attached, the movie runs at approximately two hours and a half. This film has no right being that long. What's next? Are they going to make one of these last couple of films three hours long? Eh. Overall, F9, The Fast Saga, is no doubt a flashy movie with its incredulous use of CGI and crazy stunt work. With all that involved, for lack of a better word, this film seems to lack substance. With the exception with how Dom and Jacob's characters were handled with such great care, I just wasn't completely invested with this movie. I didn't thoroughly hate this movie or absolutely love it, but if nothing else, it just feels right above average for me. I give this movie a C+. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Keep up my real reviews.